This video is the need to know basics of the morphological features of bony fishes. Now if you want the video on cartilaginous fishes, that is sharks, skates, and rays, check out my other video. Most all of us are very familiar with main species of fishes. And I bet if I showed you this fish here, let me blow one up right there so you have a better view. And I showed you these structures right here, you'd be able to tell me that they're called fins and that this fish is using them for locomotion or maneuverability and propulsion in the water. But first and foremost, we need to go over four directional identifiers and their specific meaning within the fishes. The front of the fish, where the head is, is the anterior portion of the fish, aka the cranial region. Opposite of that, near the tail, is the posterior or posterior end, aka the caudal region. On the back, we call that the dorsal region, and near the breast and belly, that is the ventral region. You should practice this. If you're an outdoors person, professionally or recreationally, interested in working with animals or within the natural sciences, this is essential to have down. These directions also work for other animals within zoology, like this dog for instance. The median fins or unpaired fins are represented by the dorsal, anal, caudal, and adipose fins. Most fishes have at least one dorsal fin. Many have two, and some have more. Often, within the bony fishes, the first dorsal fin is made of spines, and the second is made of soft rays. The adipose fin, which can be present both dorsally and ventrally on fishes, is usually just before the caudal peduncle, near the tail. And contrary to its name, it is more often than not, not composed of fatty tissue. Some species, such as scombrids, tunas, bonitos, and mackerels, have a number of dorsal and anal finlets, These are sometimes accompanied by keels, which are paired, and they are lateral protrusions aiding in locomotion. You see these a lot on pelagic fishes that swim fast and far, or also known as cruising fishes. The paired fins are the pectoral and the pelvic fins, and as the word paired implies, there are two fins comprising the pectoral fins and two fins comprising the pelvic fins, sometimes called the ventral fins. Some species do not have paired fins, such as the hagfishes, or they are very small such as on the seahorse's pelvic fin. But more often than not, we can tell how new a species is, that is, how recently evolved it is, by the placement of the pelvic fins. As more advanced teleos have pelvic fins more anterior, that is, their pelvic fins will be closer to the head on the body. The eye and the mouth are perhaps the most easily recognized morphological features besides the fins. Usually posterior and ventral to the eye is the cheek, often covering jaw muscles which is anterior to the preopercal bone, which is anterior to the opercal bone, and in combination with two other bones, the interopercal and the subopercal, forms the operculum, more often called the gill plate or gill cover. The snout is considered the region anterior to the eye. The nape is the dorsal region just posterior to the head, often where the operculum or gill plate ends and the trunk of the body begins. The breast is usually referring to the ventral region, anterior to the pelvic fins. The belly is usually referring to the ventral region, posterior to the pelvic fins, either the anus or the cloaca, which is when the urogenital passage and the anal passage are as one, are anterior to the anal fin, and the caudal peduncle is part of the body starting at the end of the anal and dorsal fins, and the lateral line, if visible to the naked eye, is seen running laterally along the body, sometimes it is fragmented, sometimes visible on the head. Thanks for watching, don't hesitate to subscribe. My videos are concise, informative, entertaining. I don't want to waste your time. I'll catch you all later. Mmm, rico.